Hello and good day, everyone. This is meteorologist Mark Molnar. Thanks for joining me for Media Mark's Hurricane 2024 Outlook. This is where I go over all the numbers from major hurricanes, hurricanes, tropical storms, what I'm expecting this tropical season. Will we see an open for business kind of tropical season from the Gulf, Caribbean, the MDR, and all the way off the eastern North American coast this hurricane season? How many storms are we looking at? And is La Nina going to be a major factor as we head mid to late season? And we'll go over the rest of the factors, including record sea surface temperature anomalies across the Atlantic Basin that could lead to the most explosive hurricane season we've seen since 2020. Let's get into it. The list of hurricane names for 2024, everything from Alberto down to William, I expect to make it all the way through this alphabet and then some. So for the numbers this hurricane season, I think we're going to have a very active season here. 27 to 30 named storms I'm predicting. Of those 27 to 30, I believe 14 to 16 of those will become hurricanes. And of those hurricanes, 6 to 8 major hurricanes. This is probably one of the most active hurricane seasons we're probably likely to see, especially since 2020 when we actually did see 30 named storms. There is a couple things coming together here, record high sea surface temperature anomalies that have carried over from last year, along with a massive uh, strengthening La Nina that's likely to happen mid to late season. So we're likely to see a backloaded season. That does not mean we won't see development on the front end of this hurricane season, though, especially with those sea surface temperatures, anomalies so high, and that vertical wind shear lowering greatly this hurricane season. For our INSO index here, we're really taking a look at where we've been and where we're going. So we're weakening from that small El Nino that we saw from a moderate one at the end of last year. And we're essentially here April into May. We're going to head parity here with zero. So we're going to go neutral and we're going to swing pretty quickly here. All the models taking us down to at least a small, a weak La Nina as we head towards August. And then look at September and October here. We're expecting this to strengthen to a moderate uh, La Nina as we head towards negative one and negative 1 1.5 degrees Celsius here. So essentially as the atmosphere gets reset... Uh, I think we'll see a very backloaded hurricane season here. Not to say we won't see storms here on the front end, especially with the high sea surface temperature anomalies that we're dealing with across the Atlantic Basin. But as we head towards late August, September, and October, I expect the numbers and intensity of these systems to greatly increase as we're lowering that vertical wind shear as the atmosphere resets itself from that El Nino into La Nina mode. Major popular tracks and areas of development. I'm very concerned about a big Cape Verde season out here. The sea surface temperatures are running tremendously high. Wind shear will be running lower than average. But look at here into parts of the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, the off the southeast coast, even up the U.S. east coast. We're going to have to watch. But it's very concerning here, especially heading into the northern Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico. This is where we could see a tremendous amount of storms. I'm expecting a lot of hits, unfortunately, here through the Caribbean islands, parts of Central America as well, as well as the Gulf Coast areas, especially from Texas all the way to Florida, the Carolinas, even the Mid-Atlantic and parts of New England have to watch out. You're well overdue. We're going to have a lot of recurving going on as well. I expect a lot of these storms to strengthen pretty rapidly out towards the Cape Verde Islands, which should help some of them at least recurve out into the open Atlantic out to sea. And then up the U.S. East Coast here as well, there is the possibility uh, we could have some hits along the U.S. East Coast into Southeast Canada. But as I said before, the main concern is from the MDR all the way to the Northern Caribbean, much of the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. So for our developing La Nina, you can already see it really starting to show up here into the eastern Pacific, right off the coast of South America here. This is crazy. The amount of cold water that is already starting here, it's really ramping up. So our La Nina is strengthening even faster than we originally thought. So sea surface temperatures here are so impressive. I have not seen this early of any hurricane season, we're running a good three to as much as five degrees Celsius above average here. This is unbelievably warm, as well as the Caribbean. The Gulf is warming up and even off the southeast coast to the United States. 
we could definitely have an explosive start to the hurricane season. But as I said before, as La Nina strengthens mid to late season, that's where it's going to be a very backloaded season. And I really wanted to thank before we continue tropical tidbits dot com for all of this complete tropical weather information. And here we go with the CFS model. You can see as we continue through here's July. So this is really starting. Look at out here in the MDR and then it through the Caribbean, the Eastern Gulf right off the Southeast coast. We're going to head through August here. Look at this. This is crazy. This is where we're really going to start to see explosive development here. And as we continue through September here, look at this. Yeah, even the Gulf really is open for business here. You're going to see a lot of systems developing and heading north. Right out here, the Cape Verde season will be on fire. And as we continue through, here's October. It's just continuing. Now, this is suggesting that we could have a lot of recurvatures out here, which would be great news. You know, as those storms intensify much more quickly, you tend to get those recurves. But look at over here into Central America. It is not looking good from the Western Caribbean northward to the Gulf. And as we head towards, say, November, I still think we'll see some named storms. Look at this. We're going to see a, quite a conglomeration. It's going to be one heck of a hurricane season here across the Caribbean, Gulf, and then the rest of the MDR. As we look at our other climate models here, you can really see G, uh, June here. Yeah, this is where things really start to ramp up. Of course, the intertropical convergence zone pretty low you know, in latitude, but that starts to bump north here towards July. Look at this surge of moisture here across parts of the Caribbean into the Gulf. And then our intertropical convergence zone really ramping up here into August. Here it is. There, there's pretty much unanimous agreement here that we're going to see an explosive amount of tropical systems here with these precipitation anomalies. You notice those anomalies go all the way up the East Coast too. So that's kind of suggesting that we could have, have some East Coast hits as well as some Gulf hits. This model is a little more optimistic in bringing in some drier air as we head towards October with really consolidating the number of tropical systems across the Caribbean and the Cape Verde seasons. And this keeps going into November. Look at the anomalies here showing up pretty readily here into the Caribbean and eventually the rest of the Caribbean islands. All right, so for our last model here, yeah, here it is for May across the Caribbean islands. We've already seen this the last couple weeks into April. And look at this. There is that massive surge as we continue the intertropical convergence zone ramping up in June and into July. There is that positive signal all the way across the MDR, even up the U.S. East Coast, the Gulf of Mexico, Central America. We are looking at a terrible hurricane season here. It is definitely open for business here across the Gulf, the Caribbean, and the rest of the MDR. And look at all the way up the East Coast here for August. Yeah, I'm pretty certain we're going to have some problems here. All the way up, probably into Southeast Canada as well. Now, September looks a little bit more optimistic on this model, but you still see, you know, these storms out here will have a tendency to recurve. But look at all this activity we'll be seeing across the Caribbean and the Gulf. And here's October. We consolidate that right across. That is the trend here, essentially. The Western Caribbean, North Central Caribbean, these areas, even into November, Let's just go out one more month, even in December. Could this hurricane season last all the way into December? It's quite possible. So the positioning of the Bermuda high, this is going to be really key to track uh, this hurricane season as we continue to watch early to mid here into the yellow. This is the high pressure that will be in control uh, over the Azores as it slowly builds westward here early to mid season. That's where we see the possibility of some of these storms riding up the East Coast. And then as we get mid to late season, that's mainly more later August into September and October. We start to see those storm systems plowing westward across the Caribbean right into the Gulf of Mexico. So as this high builds west throughout the hurricane season, we're going to start to see those storms move from fish storms more towards coastal storms. So if we take a look at sea surface temperatures going through the rest of the season, right through our band of the MDR here, all the way through the Northern Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, the Bahamas, these areas are going to be extremely above. This is what's going to feed us into this massive hurricane season and even up towards the East Coast, well above and moderately above. So we'll have to watch for some storms developing even further north of the MDR here as well. And even into the Southern Caribbean and south of the Cape Verde's well above average. 
For wind shear here, we're looking at well below average wind shear, much different than we saw last season of 2023 that was in El Nino. The La Nina means the wind shear that comes out of the southwest usually tends to die down. And I'm expecting from the Gulf of Mexico, the Northern Caribbean, all the way through the MDR here, even south of the Cape Verde Islands here, we're looking at well below average up towards the southeast U.S. and especially the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. I got plenty more weather for you in just a moment, but take a look at my affiliate. Do you want some awesome maps? Check this out. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. And as always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Hurricane 2024 Outlook. Don't forget to follow me this hurricane season. Subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Smash the like button if you like this video. Helps tremendously. Question or comment to keep our conversation weather community active down below in the comments section. Share the video with all your friends and family. Get the word out that this hurricane season is is a dangerous one so we need to be very vigilant this hurricane season and as always you can visit me at mediumark.com facebook at mediumark also hurricane northeastern also weather northeastern at susquehanna weather as well and twitter at weather eastern and i want to thank you everybody if you want to buy me a cup of coffee smash that super thanks button down below the video i do have a coffee link in the description as well a paypal link and don't forget just Follow me this hurricane season. I will keep you ahead of all the dangers and potential areas of interest. Thanks, everyone.